and welcome to New Mexico Rising. My name is Dan. As you know, each and every week I try to bring you celebrities and people of who's who from all across the country to talk about cool things and ways that you can entertain yourself and make your life maybe a little better. This week we have celebrity Quaylon Rogers from College Hill. He's going to be talking about that. Plus, BritBox brought us the tower too. And I talked to the chief engineer at Ford. Yeah, he's on this show. And it's all right here on New Mexico Rising. The U.S. job market is hot, yet too many military spouses continue to struggle as they search for careers. More than 21% of military spouses are unemployed. According to recent research from Hiring Our Heroes, so what can be done? And what is being planned to help these military heroes and their spouses? So joining us to discuss are Elizabeth O'Brien, Executive Director of Hiring Our Heroes, and Tiana Carter of USAA. Welcome to the show, you two. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Elizabeth, what difficulties do transitioning service members and military spouses face in finding employment? We're seven times more likely to move over state lines. I know this because I am an active duty military spouse for almost 20 years. Uh, and at one point we moved seven times in eight years. And so we're really looking to our communities around the country to create a warm landing place for military spouses when they move to those communities so that they can get quickly integrated into the job market and go to work. Uh, because oftentimes we have to move in another two to three years. And so we don't have time to waste. Tiana, what makes military spouses such great employees? Some of the great benefits are they're flexible, resilient, creative problem solvers, and a lot to, has to do with the fact that they've had to navigate these unique challenges of being in the military. The other thing I'd mention is that military spouses are highly educated, with 34% having bachelor's degrees and another 15% with a postgraduate degree. So it's an all-around win for us as an employer, and we're honored at uh, supporting Hiring Our Heroes and the Military Spouse Employment Summit event. So how does Hiring Our Heroes help? Hiring Our Heroes helps our transitioning service members and military spouses since our inception in 2011 by creating innovative programming. And that programming changes in, in response to the needs of our community. One of the programs I'm most excited about right now for military spouses is the internship program that we have in collaboration with the Department of Defense. And we're placing military spouses into internship pro uh, program uh, opportunities with great corporate partners like USAA. And we know it's working because there's an 85% job offer rate with an average starting salary of $70,000. And this is so important because it means we're allowing our military families to have a pathway to dual income and allow them to come alongside what the rest of America has an opportunity to do and earn. So what were the lessons learned from the Military Spouse Employment Summit? So the summit was a wonderful opportunity where organizations, corporations, and the spouse community got together to grow, advocate, and educate uh, employers on the value and the impact of the military spouse community. And so it was a wonderful event. I know, Elizabeth, you have some thoughts as well. Yeah, it really was a wonderful event where we were able to come together in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And also equally important is that we had a global network that dialed in uh, via LinkedIn, and they were able to feel like they were part of the day and they were able to also uh, have great opportunity to glean some of that rich information uh, that our folks brought forth on that uh, at the Military Spouse Employment Summit. Well, thank you too for joining me this morning. Where can we go for more information? Yep, head on over to hiringourheroes.org. Uh, thank you too for joining me this morning. Thank you. Thank you. The summer season is just weeks away, and that means a new opportunity to reset your health and all of those wellness goals you have. But today, we have wellness lifestyle expert Jamie Hess, who is here with her tips for a healthier routine, making some me time and focusing on our wellness. Welcome to the show, Jamie. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you for having me. Okay, Jamie, you got to help me out. What are some ways you found to keep self-care at the forefront? Well, I'm glad that you asked it that way because self-care is what should be at the forefront, right? This is not about losing 10 pounds. It's not just about diet, exercise. Fundamentally, wellness is about self-care. And I realized over this past year, it's really about focusing those moments back with your family, with your loved ones, and focusing on experiences. And for me, especially in the summer, that often means travel. And I'm not alone in that. 
Booking.com did some research recently that showed that 76% of Americans say travel helps their mental and emotional well being more than other forms of relaxation. So, Booking.com's free loyalty program, Genius, is a great place to start. In fact, it's really、uh, an easy way to get these great benefits that never expire, these great discounts. As soon as you sign up, you get access to their rewards. You automatically get 10% off across select car rentals and hundreds of places to stay. And of course, as your level goes up in the Genius program, so do your discounts. So, a really great way to prioritize travel as a form of self care would be to go on over to Booking.com. Slash genius. So, how can we stop life's everyday ailments from getting in the way of、uh, enjoying this warmer weather? I recommend keeping Arnicare on hand in your house. Now, unlike other over the counter pain relief gels, Boron Arnicare gel, that's the full name, is different. A couple of reasons it's unscented, and also it's not just for you know, relief of pain in your muscles. It also helps with things like swelling from injuries and discoloration from bruises. It's made from the Arnica Montana plant, so it's safe to use for the whole family. So, a really great way to make sure the pain doesn't come in between you and your summer activities. Now, while we're talking about things that you can use in your house and that you should have for your family, let's talk about humidifiers because I have two little boys. They both have VIX humidifiers next to their bed. And for good reason, right? VIX, of course, the number one brand in humidification across the country. The VIX humidifier is great because it gives you that ability to use their medicated VIX Vapo steam and the Vapo pads to create that cool mist. Now, that's going to relieve cough congestion. It's going to reduce that dry air discomfort to kind of help you just breathe better, even sleep more comfortably. I also love that it's not just for when you're sick, right? I、uh, use lavender essential oils in mine, and that really does the trick to kind of contribute to overall well being. So, what other tips do you have for these families this season? I love the Diaper Genie Signature Pail. This is a way to de stress any new parent's life, right? So, I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. Number one, it's the first diaper disposal system with a patented odor controlling pail and refill system. That's just going to keep your house less stinky and smelling fresh. It's going to keep the pets out of the Diaper Genie, right? Because it locks. Also, I love that it has a foot pedal. That makes for hands free use. That de stresses your life. It holds up to 47 newborn diapers and all of that, all while using 70% less plastic in their odor controlling cartridge. All right, Jamie, where can we go for more information and how can we follow you on social media? Well, that's a good place to start. You can head over to Instagram. I am NYC Fit Fam and I share tips and tricks like this every single day. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Jamie, you are. Our,、uh, I guess, our summer hero. That's what we got. We got our summer family hero. <laughs> Love that. Thanks for having me. You know, nearly two million kids across America are lacing up their cleats and heading to dugouts because Little League season is here. And that means families have a lot of growing active bodies to nourish, but hectic schedules create mealtime challenges and often have parents making fewer nutritious game time decisions when it comes to feeding families on the go. But our next guest knows how to get those Little Leaguers fueled up. We have sports registered dietitian Don Jackson Blattner, who's joining us with some tips today. Don, welcome to the show. And、uh, you're an Albuquerque, and so I'm glad to have you back and on the air. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking about Little League. This is going to be so much fun. All right. All right. If anyone has kids in Little League, you know what a hectic schedule that kind of is. So, what tips do you have for people out there that will make mealtime easy and filling enough to at least get us? Through all of that. Yeah, so I have two recipes that I love for active families pizza style egg bites and tortilla egg roll ups. I love these because you can make them ahead and keep them in the fridge. So when you're running to games and practices, you just grab and go. And plus, both of these recipes are made with Eglin's Best Eggs, and they have six times more vitamin D, 25% less saturated fat, and more than double the omega 3s. Compared to ordinary eggs, so you can feel like so good. You're giving your kids nutrition to run those bases and hit their home runs. So, when we get to the ballpark grind so easily, how do we feel excellent instead of exhausted? Energy is key. So, balanced meals I love for energy, and I call these power plates where you have all the food groups on there like protein for your muscles, from eggs or chicken or beans. Carbs for energy, like oatmeal, whole grain toast, and then colorful fruits and veggies to protect your cells, like spinach and berries. Those balanced meals are key for energy, but so is sleep. Sleep is when our muscles actually recharge. 
So turn off the electronics about an hour before bed so your body can register that it's time to sleep. All right, you know every kid is dreaming of trying to get to that Little League Baseball World Series. Can you tell us how they could get there and crack that one? Yeah, I got great news for you. So Eglin's Best has teamed up with Little League, and they're giving fans a chance to win four tickets to the Little League Baseball World Series that's happening in Williamsport this summer through their MVP sweepstakes. This is most valuable plate. And as the official egg of Little League, Eglin's Best is going to be there uh, in the fan zone for more nutrition tips and a really fun activity. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. Where can we go for more information? Okay, so to get in that MVP sweepstakes for those tickets and for the recipes I was talking about, it's all at ebfamilysweeps.com. Well, Dawn, thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you so much. And coming up on New Mexico Rising, I talked to the chief engineer at Ford Motor Cars. Are you as surprised as I am that he's on this show? Good, that's what we do here. And a little later, Quaylon Rogers of College Hill Celebrity Edition chats with us all right here on New Mexico Rising. From rocket scientist to automotive engineer, today we have a guest whose story is the quintessential American success story. And joining us, he shares his inspiring story from growing up in New York City to becoming a graduate research fellow at NASA. And ultimately, you know, the chief engineer at Ford, so today he's yes. going to talk about working on that new Ford Ranger and welcome to the show and his amazing career, Juan de Pena. Welcome to the show, Juan. Good morning, Dan. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. Can you tell us about your childhood growing up in New York City? Did you always dream of being a rocket scientist? I, I, I did. Um, uh, it's crazy to say that, but um, I, I always liked math and science. Uh, my, my my parents, uh, who were from the Dominican Republic, uh, they they put you know me and my siblings through uh, you know Catholic school, and uh, I, I was good at math and science, and uh, I you know I'd always be on planes going to the Dominican Republic like summers, you know on vacation, and um, I wanted to, to just you know uh, uh, work on machines. You know, I, I liked math. I liked science. I was good at it. It made sense to, to work on, on airplanes and, and NASA just seemed like a perfect fit. So, um, I wanted to be like an astronaut. And so, uh, that's kind of how I started, uh, pursuing, uh, uh I, at first I was getting a PhD in mechanical engineering and I was working on satellites, uh, uh with NASA. Uh, and, but then I quickly changed gears and I said, you know, I wanted a quicker pace in my career. Uh, and so I came to Ford and I have not looked back. I've had a great, great, uh, almost 30 years with Ford. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, can you tell us about a challenging time when you thought you might not meet your goals? Early on, one of the bigger challenges was like, how was I going to pay for, you know, for a bachelor's, a master's? And, and I was, I was on track to, to get towards getting a PhD as well. Um, so I was, I was keen on getting as many scholarships as I could and putting together the best financial aid package that I could, and it, which included loans. I took, quite, I took out quite a bit of loans. I paid them off, um, but it was an investment in myself. Uh, my parents worked very, very hard. They were poor. They did the best they could. They sacrificed a lot to put me and my siblings through Catholic school. And, and they made sure that we worked hard, that we got good grades. I mean, when you think of, 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 of a doting parent in terms of making sure that they're looking at your grades and investing that, that time and, and expecting that you're going to do the best that you possibly can, um, that's why exactly what they did. So um, um, they, were the, they were my best uh, role models. So how does it feel being a role model to other first generation Latino Americans? Uh, it, you know, it, it, uh, first of all, I'm honored to, to be considered a role model. Um, I, I think uh, uh, it, to those who much is given, much is expected of. And so uh, as, as I started to, to sort of, you know, somewhat succeed in my career, I absolutely have been very, very active as a mentor in the community and including STEM programs. You know, our country needs much, much, much more engineers. So science, technology, engineering, math, we've got to support those programs in our, in our grade schools, in our middle schools, in our high schools. So we could really fill that funnel with, with, with as many people as possible. 
And uh, what's new or different with this all new Ford Ranger? It is an all new Ford Ranger for 2024. Um, from the from the backbone of the of the of the truck, uh, from its frame up to it, uh, new additional engines, new class exclusive technologies. Uh, we listened, we interviewed immensely uh, our, our, our customers. We learned what their pain points were, what they wanted in the products, uh, and, and we delivered. Uh, this year, we have uh, an all new to, to, to uh, the Ford Ranger 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, same engine that's in the Bronco, and the Ford F-150 Batoon for Ranger. Uh, we've got a, a, a great class exclusive 10 speed automatic transmission together with that engine. Gives you great performance for towing 7,500 pounds or carrying a pretty big payload at 1,805 pounds. Uh, also new for this year, we've got the all new Ranger Raptor. We've had it in the rest of the world for a number of years. Our customers in the US have told us, hey, we really, really want the, the Raptor here, the Ranger Raptor, and this year we're bringing it to them. Uh, where can we go for more information and uh, can I give them your card so when I go car shopping I can get a good discount? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Ford.com, uh, you go to Ford.com, you're going to find out all you want about the Ford Ranger. Please go visit it. Um, I think we've done a great job. We're all, we've really expanded our offering dramatically. We've, we're making this the best, toughest, built for tough Ranger ever for our customers. Thank you. Well, well, thank you. That is the chief engineer at Ford, Juan de Pena. Thanks for joining me on the show today. And uh, yeah, I'm really actually interested in getting a new truck or something. And the Ford Ranger is the one I've been looking at. So thank you for that. And thanks for building, my friend. Thank you, Dan. Well, we are thrilled to welcome Nancy Travis, the star of the new Hallmark original series, Ride, to our show. You know, Ride is a gripping family drama that follows the McMurrays of ranching dynasty in Colorado as they struggle to keep their beloved ranch afloat. So today we have Nancy Travis here to tell Yay. us all about the show on the Hallmark <laughs> Channel. Welcome to the show, Nancy. Thank you. My pleasure. Happy to be here. All right. What drew you to the character of Isabel McMurray in Ride? Mm. What got you there? Well, Isabel McMurray, it wasn't very hard to be drawn to Isabel McMurray. And uh, I think people who watch the show will agree she is... Uh, the matriarch of this rodeo dynasty family. She has a ranch that she's trying to keep afloat. And to me, she is every woman. She is the epitome of grit, grace, uh, and, and she's a working woman trying to make ends meet and trying to keep her family close. She, uh, she's a dynamo. And I, I love playing her and I uh, love watching her just wrestle with these situations. So how did you prepare for the role of a ranching matriarch and a uh, businesswoman? Did you do any uh, ranching yourself or go wrangle some cattle? Yeah, interesting. Well, I didn't do any wrangling, but I did learn to ride a horse okay. and uh, drive a tractor and uh, just had some rudimentary lessons in animal care uh, and, and just what it takes to, to run a ranch which uh, it's hard, hard work. And I give credit to the people that do this and, and, uh, and support for the independent ranchers who, um, who are, are trying to make a difference. And frankly, to the women ranchers, which a lot of people aren't aware, but, but there's a surprising number of women who are single-handedly running ranches and uh, doing it in a whole new, holistic, soulful way that is uh, is pretty impressive. Did you tease any upcoming storylines or character developments that's coming up in Ride? Well, no, I will tell you that uh, there's, we've been building up all of these uh, stories with, with the characters. And I think all of these secrets that we've been playing out are about to be revealed. And um, we'll see what happens to the ranch. Well, thank you very much, Nancy, for joining me this morning. Uh, remember, Ride airs Sunday nights at 8 p.m. on the Hallmark Channel. Thanks for joining me again this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and coming up next on New Mexico Rising, we have the Tower 2 death message from BritBox. If you're a big fan of, like, British police stories, we'll be chatting with them a little bit. And a little later, College Hill Celebrity Edition. We chat with Quaylon Rogers and find out about uh, life in a reality show. And it's all right here on New Mexico Rising. Hello, how are you two? 
Very good. Very excited about, you know, uh, the Tower 2 coming out on the 16th of May, Ripbox, and uh, yeah, just to continue the story, actually. All right. Well, for those that are just tuning in right now, I'm talking to the stars of the second part of the new series of The Tower. It's now Tower 2 Death Message from BritBox. And anytime I feel like I need my Brit fix, I love checking out the things on BritBox. And you two are in part two of the story of basically detectives and police officers trying to deal with a lot of dark and underground stuff. And things are intertwined. I guess when you're playing um, a police officer, having never been one, um, it's, it was really great to have fantastic um, consultants on set the whole time that you could ask questions of and, you know, make sure that you're really portraying this role in the most believable and authentic way possible. Um, you know, doing police men and women justice in front of the camera. And I think for me, you know, there are a lot of really dark scenes um, both in season one and even more so in season two but luckily for for me as an actor um it, you know my character lizzie adama who is a rookie police officer she's experiencing a lot of these situations for the very first time as you know and seeing things for the very first time um as well as obviously myself as an actor so it was really great just being able to be in the moment and react to whatever was, you know, whatever situation I was put in. Did either one of you have to do a little like real police training or at least mock police training? We had, we had bits. We would talk a lot to, you know, uh, police. Uh, I, I would talk a lot to policemen and we would, I would ask a lot of questions. I think it's quite, it's crazy. Like I think uh, over our careers, you know, sometimes we get to play police officers in other roles. So, there's a sense where it's like, oh, I don't need to do that training again. I, I did a bit that bit of that elsewhere. But one of the most important things for me was to make sure that we were really representing uh, these, these police officers and, uh, and having those important conversations like, what is it like to, you know, uh, send a death message, basically, to, to, to let a family know that they've lost a, 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 lost a family member? And, uh, you know, and how do they take how do they separate the work uh, from the personal life? And and I think those conversations are really important, as well as having the consultants on set just to, you know, guide you. Because sometimes you can get caught up on what you see on TV and it's like, yeah, that's what they do on TV, but this is how it's done in real life. And um, it's just been, it's been a joy, even though it's a tough show to sort of film and it, it tests you emotionally and whatnot. The first season is about finding a couple of bodies at the bottom of a basement. The second season, you're investigating a missing person that kind of went missing during Princess Di's funeral. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, Sarah Collins, um, who's played by Gemma Whelan, is investigating this cold case about a missing girl who, yeah, I think went missing in 1997 when um, Princess Diana died. And my character, uh, Lizzie Adama, is investigating a, a domestic, well, dealing with a domestic abuse um victim uh so both really you know um very very harrowing um storylines and i think as jimmy said it's you 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 come into set and, you, and and a lot of the time when you're doing a drama like this you are you know it's it's you're having to put yourself emotionally in quite a you know awful place but that's why it's so important to have those moments of levity, have those moments of laughter in between um, shooting. Well, thank you two for joining me this morning. Definitely check out the Tower 2 Death Message. It's available right now on BritBox. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, our next guest is a social media sensation and a rising star in the world of entertainment. You may know him as Quaylon and blame it on Quay Rogers or simply Quay. A name has become synonymous with humor, creativity, and much more. With millions, I'm going to say millions of followers on social media, Quaylon has been captivating audience, and now he's part of BET's College Hill Celebrity Edition. He was a former cast member. He has some insights. Quaylon, tell me all about the new experience of being part of College Hill, but now Celebrity Edition, bud. 
Well, I know we don't have a long, so you want the long version or the short version? <laughs> hey, we got three to four minutes. Anything you can fill within that time, I'm down with whatever. You can even do a tap dance if you feel like it. I'm ready for that, too. Well, I, I'm I'm a definitely uh, will fail at tap dancing. I'm not good at that, but I can twerk if you want me to. Um, <laughs> I, I will I will say this though. This by far is one of the most exhilarating experiences I have ever ever done in my life. <laughs> so well, it was cool to wake up to cameras every day because you you literally wake up to cameras in your face. One, oh. you know, and going back to school when you haven't really like. Now I'm creating short films and like skits and stuff like that. I haven't really, um, I haven't really had a chance to do math in a long time. So going back to that was <laughs> it was kind of challenging math and you know reading in front of classes and I didn't realize how much anxiety I had before going on this show. Literally, yeah. there would be a body of like maybe twelve students in front of us, and my mind would be. Like I would be wrecked in my head because I didn't know what to say in front of the students. Um, so yeah, like little things like that was like things that I saw um, that I went into it being scared of, but I actually ended up conquering towards the end for sure. Yeah, don't ask me to do some long division and shove some cameras in my beak. I'm going to be freaking out. I have no, actually even simple long division. I, I wouldn't be able to do that myself. Uh, <laughs> like during a show like this, when do you get your privacy? When do you get moments for yourself just to like, yes, I know we're doing a show. Yes. Can I just have a moment to sit back and breathe? Do you get those moments in there? No. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you do not have privacy movements you wake up to cameras above you and it's crazy because we're hooked up to these little walkie talkies and stuff like that and mics and stuff so whenever they see you talk the cameras are literally busting the kicking the door in to like see what you got to say so that was just different how do you prepare for something like that do you watch episodes of the truman show and you have to be like this is my life for the next couple of weeks I was lucky enough to do season two. So watching season one I saw how the teachers were like very serious about their studies and and they not them not caring about who you are. Like I don't care about that you've been on TV for X amount of years or done social media for X amount of years. You have to complete this work just like every other um, student in, yeah. in, in on the campus. So yeah, it was a challenge for sure, but I did it. All right, Quaylana, we don't have a lot of time with you, but thank you for joining us with us. Uh, check out the new season of. Uh, uh, BET's College Hill. It's now available on BET. We'll chat with you soon. All right, Quaylon? See you later. Bye bye, y'all. Hey, I want to thank you guys for joining me each and every week right here on New Mexico Rising. If you want to be part of the show, all you got to do is email me. That is New Mexico Rising at gmail.com. And uh, it, tell me about your business, tell me about a band, uh, send it my way, and I'll play it right here on the show. This is what we do each and every week right here on New Mexico Rising. See you guys next week. Thank you for joining in.